In this video, I want to talk about writing exponential or linear models. And we're going to look at linear models and then two types of exponential models, the discrete ones and the continuous ones, so you can practice a bit with telling the difference between them. Now, I've written all three of these models in a little table here, and I want you to notice that I am rewriting the slope-intercept form of an equation to use the value a for the y-intercept. And that's because in the exponential equations, a always represents the initial amount, and the y-intercept always represents the initial amount. So I'm switching y equals mx plus b to q of t equals a plus mt. That's a is the initial value plus m is the slope and t is the variable. The discrete exponential model is q of t equals lowercase a times lowercase b, and then the b is to the t power. In this case, b is the growth factor and a is the initial value. And then the continuous exponential model is capital Q of t equals lowercase a times lowercase e raised to the kt. It's just the e that's raised to the kt power. That lowercase k is the continuous growth or decay rate. So b is a growth factor. That's 1 plus or minus the rate. k is the continuous growth rate. There's no 1 plus involved in that one. I do want you to pay careful attention to the fact that in the continuous exponential model, we use k instead of r. k is a continuous growth rate. It is not the same thing as the r value. The base b in the discrete model is equal to 1 plus r. However, b is not equal to 1 plus k. In fact, b is actually equal to e to the k power. Let's compare two situations. First scenario. A population of 500 grows at 8% per year. Second scenario, a population of 500 has a continuous growth rate of 8% per year. The major difference between those two problems is the word continuous. That's what clues you in that you're looking at a continuous exponential model instead of a discrete one. For the first scenario, the population of 500 growing at 8% per year, we're going to find b, the growth factor. That's 1 plus r, where r is the growth rate. In this case, that would be 1 plus 0 0.08. That gives us a model, capital P sub 1 of t, 1 for scenario 1, equals 500 times left parentheses, 1.08, right parentheses, and then the part in parentheses is raised to the t power. For the second scenario, a population of 500 with a continuous growth rate of 8%, that continuous growth rate is k, and that's 0 0.08. We write this model, p sub 2 of t for second scenario, equals 500 times e to the 0 0.08 t. Notice those are very different looking functions. If we graph these two functions, they are both exponential, they both have a y-intercept of 500, they both are growth curves, but one grows slightly faster than the other when we're looking at positive time values. The one that grows faster is the model with continuous exponential growth. And of course, that's because we're compounding the growth more often than we are with the discrete model. The discrete model basically does one compounding a year, right? We calculate the growth once a year. With continuous models, we're calculating the growth all the time. We're essentially using e to approximate that. And so we will see slightly bigger growth out of this. Now here's a set of scenarios for you to try. I want you to write the rate and a model for each of these scenarios. Scenario one, a population of 1,000 declines at 5% per year. Scenario two, a population of 1,000 declines with a continuous rate of 5% per year. Pause the video, write them out, come back when you're finished. Okay, we're back. Hopefully you caught the word continuous in the second scenario, and that's going to be the biggest difference between the two. The first, we're going to use discrete exponential model, and the second scenario, we'll use a continuous exponential model. With a discrete exponential model, we have an r value. The r value here is negative 0 0.05 because it's declining at 5%. I hope you caught the negative there. That means the growth factor, b, is 1 plus r, which would be 1 minus 0 0.05 or 0 0.95. Our model would be capital P, and I'm going to use a sub 1, of t equals 1,000, our starting population, times left paren, 0 0.95, right paren, and then that's to the t power. 
For the second scenario, we have continuous exponential growth, which means we're using a k value, and that k value is negative 0.05. Our model would be capital P sub 2 for a second scenario of t equals 1,000 e to the negative 0.05 t in the power. Let's take a look at those graphs in Desmos and see if we can explain what happens. All right, I'm over in Desmos. I have the two models graphed. They both have y-intercepts at 1,000. They both are decreasing, in other words, decaying models. And we can see that in this case, one of them decays just slightly faster than the other. And we will have to zoom in probably to see which one. And it might be a little counterintuitive. In this case, it's the discrete model that decays a little bit faster. Or you could think of it as the continuous growth model that holds on to its value a little bit longer. All right, I have three more problems for you to practice before we wrap up this topic. For each of the problems, I want you to declare variables for the problems and then write a model for the scenario. You're gonna have to pay careful attention to the wording in the problems, which gives you a clue about what kind of model you want to make. Please pause the video and try these yourself. It's super easy to watch somebody else do math it's much harder to do it yourself. Imagine if you watched a pianist at a concert and you thought to yourself, oh, I can do that because I watched somebody do it. Of course you wouldn't say that. You would have to practice it yourself. And especially with these application problems, it's really important that you give it a try. So pause the video and give these a try. Okay, we're back. Let's see how we did. Let me start by reading the first scenario. In the year 2010, app developers had earned an accumulated $1.5 billion from the Apple App Store. The cumulative earnings grew continuously at approximately 40% per year, which is a pretty fast growth rate. So before we do anything, let's note important words in the problem and declare our variables. In this case, we do have that the growth is continuous and we have the rate, it's 40% per year. Let's declare our variables then. We're gonna let t equal the years since 2010. And we should really all have the same variable declared because the initial value, the a value, is 1.5 billion and that happens in the year 2010. So we have to declare 2010 as year zero. In other words, t is years since 2010. That should be the same for all of us. Now what you choose for your other variable may be different. I'm gonna use a capital C, for cumulative earnings, and this is in billions. Now, I did not use E for this variable, and that's because the letter E is the base of a continuous exponential function, and if you forget to capitalize it, you can run into a lot of problems. So in general, I avoid using E or capital E as variable declarations. Well, what else do we know in this problem? We know that the k value is gonna be 0 0.40, that's an increase of 40% a year. We know that the initial value is 1.5 for 1.5 billion, and we should now be able to make a model. That's capital C of lowercase t equals 1.5 times e to the kt, which is gonna be 0 0.40. T. Hopefully you got that one. Second scenario. In the year 2009, internet consumption worldwide was 48 minutes per person. The internet consumption per person grew at 12 minutes per year. Important words here, this 12 minutes per year. Notice we have no percentages in this problem. We have a fixed quantity of growth, and this indicates to us this is a linear model. Let's go ahead and declare our variables. Let's let t be the years since 2009, and that way we can use the 48 minutes as the y-intercept. See how that works? Very clever. And so our other variable, I'm gonna call this capital M to be minutes. So this is gonna be minutes of internet use per person. And I'll just add here on average, of course, put that in parentheses maybe. What else do we know about this problem? We know that the initial value A is 48 minutes and that the slope, lowercase m, is 12. So when we write this, we're gonna have capital M of T equals 48 plus 12 T. 
or 12t plus 48, just as long as the 12 is the number in front of the t. All right, last scenario. In the year 2005, 705 million units of CDs were sold in the U.S. Since then, CD sales have been declining at a rate of 17.1% per year. Okay, what do we have in this problem? Well, we do have a percent, so we know it's some kind of exponential, and we know it's a declining percent, and the word continuous was never mentioned in this problem. So if it's never mentioned, you have to assume that you're looking at a discrete model. If it's continuously compounding, the problem will say that that's a continuous rate. Often, when you're given the data, you make the choice about whether you're using a discrete or continuous model, and we'll get there. Uh, but in problems, look for the word continuous to detect a continuous exponential model. Let's declare some variables. So let's let t be the years since 2005. So we can set up the initial value to be 705. I'm going to use capital C for the millions of units of CDs. And then what else do I know in this problem? I know the initial value in year 2005 is 705 million, or just 705. And then I also know the R value is negative 0.171. So remember it's negative and remember to convert it to a decimal. The B value is going to be 1 plus R. And in this case, that's 1 minus 0.171, which is 0.829. So the model is capital C of lowercase t equals 705 times left paren 0.829, right paren raised to the t power. Just to recap, three kinds of models that we're going to often use interchangeably. Linear models, discrete exponential models, and continuous exponential models. Again, remember, these are not the only kinds of mathematical models. We have quadratic models, square root models, and we're going to get into some logarithmic and periodic models as well but these are often what we see in so many graphs in the real world. So you wanna learn them well.